It's the last ride for the NASCAR Pinty Series here at the Autodrome St. Stash. The Montreal Madhouse is closing its doors after this racing season, but not before we get one more great racing memory. This is race number 11 of the 2019 NASCAR Pinty Series, the Lucas Oil 250, presented by Bumper Door and Coors Light on TSN. Welcome to the final NASCAR Pinty Series race here from Autodrome St. Estash. I'm Dave Bradley along with Adam Ross, Todd Lewis is trackside. Adam, after 54 years of entertaining the Quebec motorsport community, St. Estash will be no more after this season. Dave, I have a hard time picturing stock car racing in the province of Quebec without first thinking of St. Estash. Andrew Ranger got a stock car start here at St. Estache, is now tied with Kevin Lacroix in the very hotly contested points chase. This one's going to come down to the wire. With three races left, Ranger and Lacroix have separated themselves from the rest of the pack. Dumoulin needs to be nearly perfect in the next three outings to contend for a title. And Tagliani, well, we learned yesterday that he is out of contention. He's developed a viral infection that has sidelined him for today's race. And the boss, Scott Steckley, has been called into action. That's right. The owner of 22 Racing, a four-time NASCAR PT Series champion, is putting on the race suit after a three-year hiatus. He'll pilot the 18 here today. And looking at drivers' winning percentage with wins here, Scott Steckley, four wins. He podium 71% of the time. Kennington, one win here at St. Estaff. Donald Teach, the best top five percentage at 100%. Kerry Mix has a couple of wins back in the Cascar days as a top five percentage of 50. Let's get this race underway with the command from Francois Bienvenu from Lucas Oil Product. Driver. front straightaway and on a drum St. Estache for the final time. Qualifying got rained out, Dave, so we line up with practice times. Kevin Lacroix on the pole. Alex LeBay still looking to get his season turned around. We'll start second. We'll ride along with the number one of Joey McComb, who is back behind the wheel here today. We've got a little bit of a throwback theme. We'll tell you about it. And there's new dad, Jason Hathaway. New baby boy, Maxon Overy Hathaway at home. And you want to talk about people in the grandstands. GM Paye has a ton of people here to cheer on Mark Antoine Cameron in the 22 Chevrolet. Let's take a look at your Mopar starting grid. As you mentioned, Adam, Kevin Lacroix on pole, and Alex LeBay on the outside in the 36. Row number two has LP Doolin, and Jason Hathaway will start in fourth position. To row three we go, and it's Kerry Mix in the 0-2 alongside Mark Antoine Cameron in the 22. In the fourth row, it's going to be Mark Dilley in the 64, DJ Kennington in the 17. Looking back to row number five, that's where we find Andrew Ranger in the 27. Scott Steckley in the 18 will roll off in 10th. Donald Teach in the 24 on the inside of row number six, and Simone Zion Vien in the 37. Starting 13th, Matthew Kingsbury in the 75, alongside David Michaud in the 56. That is Brandon White in the 04, and Joey McComb in the number one. Rounding out the field, Todd Cresswell makes his NASCAR Pinty Series debut behind the wheel of the 43. And we talked a little bit about the throwback weekend. Six drivers in today's field were competitive back in the old Cascar ranks. All wanted to be here to say goodbye and salute this great crowd and this great track. Kerry Mix has been talking about this race for weeks. He is here to contend, and with a fifth place starting spot, he's backing that up, Dave. Let's take a look at the E3 Spark Plugs race analysis, Adam. 250 laps today. 250 laps, it'll be a midway break where they'll take on four tires and fuel all at the same time around lap 125. Driver news before we get going, the 75 car out of the Lacroix Racing Stables, that is Matthew Kingsbury. He has lots of ACT experience, going to run his first NASCAR 50 Series race here at St. Eustache. He will run the final two events as well. And changes in the CBRT lineup in the 43, it's Todd Cresswell. Again, lots of racing experience, his first 50 Series start. And general manager for CBRT, Joey McComb, behind the wheel of the one this week. Joey, a proud papa himself, he's here this weekend with his son, Miles. 
and a fresh newborn at home. So, tis the season, Dave. <laughs> Indeed it is. The Dodge pace truck pulls off. We're set for 250 laps on a tight bull ring here at Autodrome St. Estache. Kevin Lacroix, Alex LeBay lead them through turn number four. We're looking for green here in the Lucas Oil 250. It's one last dash at St. Estache, and we're underway. Justin Bodine, the announcer here at Autodrome St. Estache, the honorary flagman, Dave. It's a pretty cool opportunity to get the drop the green flag here in the final race for the NASCAR Pinty Series. Things stay so crowded here at this racetrack. Alex LeBay did a great job to get down into the second spot in front of Jason Hathaway on the start. The main race here, everybody wants to pick up positions, Dave, but job number one, get into the racing line, and that's on the bottom. Absolutely. You don't want to be stuck up on the outside. Even Andrew Ranger, who loves being up on the outside, he wanted to get down to the inside in a hurry. There he is in the Mopar number 27, battling with the 64, Mark Dilley. And the afternoon may develop into that where there's multiple grooves, but for now, get on the bottom, figure out what your car is doing, talk to your crew chief and your spotters. There's going to be a lot of communication today. Mark Dilley there in the Leland number 64, just ahead of the 18 of Scott Steckley as we ride on board with the boss, Canadian Motorsport Hall of Famer, currently sitting in 11th. And talking to Scott Steckley today, it was really interesting. He's got a different game face on. I think he's happy to be back behind the wheel, but at the same time, this car is fitted and set up for Alex Tagliani. There's a lot of subtle differences. Yeah, I asked Scott how much time he had before he learned he was going to be driving this car. He said, about Friday afternoon, he got the call from Alex Tagliani saying he wouldn't be able to drive. So that's Alex's seat in there. And it's just got a lot of padding trying to make Scott comfortable. We look at LP Dumoulin in the 47. He's able to run a tighter line coming off the corner. Jason Hathaway with a big wiggle going down into the turn. And he's losing the front of that race car on corner exit. Hathaway, a big slide off turn number two. And there you see the high A number 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron. And remember, he won his very first NASCAR race right here at Autodrome St. Estache a year ago. Ooh, what's interesting here, now that it's a midway brake race, we've seen drivers before hold off on taking tires till as late as they possibly can. Caden Lapsovich comes to mind. He did not have a winning car all night, but they hung on to their tires long enough that they took them late. He passed his way through the field as we've got Andrew Ranger way to the inside, making a move on DJ Kennington. That play is sort of taken out of the playbook, Dave, because they're all going to take their tires at the same time. And you can hear just how physical this racetrack is. The surface is rough and bumpy, still right down there on the inside of turn number two. You're by one. We just heard quickly Susan Mix, Carrie Mix's wife, who is also his spotter, and she's a veteran spotter. Suspension has collapsed on that car. 
That uh, guy's suspension issues on the number one car. Joey McComb at the wheel this week, and looks like it might be an early day for that team. They look like their problems are pretty serious. Yeah, the crew right now are just trying to lift the car enough to get the jack under it as we see Matthew Kingsbury in the 75 machine. He's got around Mark Dilly in the 64. Simone Dionvian wants to do the same. Whoa! Mark Dilly, a big wiggle with the 37. Castro dodge of Simone Dionvian and Dilly again chases the car up the racetrack in turn number two. There goes Brandon White to the inside, the 04. Brandon White in the 0 4 machine. He hasn't run the full schedule this year, but he's done a lot of racing. Great to see him back at the racetrack. In that Mohawk Market, number 0 4. And you have to look at the 56, David Michaud out of Blainville, Quebec. And behind the Jim Bray Autosport number 56, he's joined that fray as well. So Dilly has been fighting that car. He's turning about four times. We got problems on the front stretch. That's a big wreck on the front straightaway. Hard contact into the wall between White and Mark Dilly. And somewhere underneath that smoke is two race cars with lots of damage. Now you saw the 56 Amisho up against the inside wall. Caution flies. And it's for this mess here going into turn number one, but it started way back on the exit of turn number four. Brandon White backing up to pull away. Lots of body damage on the front of that car. I don't see any fluids coming out of it, and that's a good thing. As we watch again, uh, it's almost like Brandon White didn't know Dilly was still on his outside as Mark Dilly climbing from his race car. Good to see Dilly is okay. We'll reset the field. We'll bring it back to St. Stash here on TSN. round of the NASCAR Pinty Series on TSN is brought to you by Pinty's, making great food fun. Mopar, we built it, we know it. And by Equipment LAV, the leading provider of construction equipment rental and sales services in Canada. So important on these restarts, Dave, to start on the inside lane. Much safer place to be as Dan Hawkins waves the green flag. And there goes Kevin Lacroix. Squirts out on the inside. The 36 of Alex LeBay will try to get down in front of the three of Jason Hathaway. And once again, that lead trio of cars. Even the top four doing a great job getting single file. A little bit deeper, we've got LP Dumoulin in that 47. Trying to battle with Andrew Ranger in the 27, just outside of the top five. Interesting, we see the 27 of Andrew Ranger. You have to remember the 74 of Kevin Lacroix has led a lap. That's a bonus point, and that's very important. They came into this race time. And Andrew Ranger knew he had to get to the front. I'll tell you another driver, we're looking at him right now. Alex LeBay told me just before the race started, he says, I do not want to be anywhere but first. Second through fifth, it's like a hornet's nest on these restarts. Jason Hathaway giving chase to LeBay in the 36. Everybody pretty much single file, and right now the top six are nose to tail, and a bit of a train with Donald Teach trying to close in. You know what's interesting? We're missing the 47 from this lead group. LB Dumoulin started in third. He's all the way back in ninth. Yeah, something amiss on that race car. He is moving in the wrong direction for certain. And I'm surprised that the top seven, everybody is right together. Normally at this racetrack, there's a rabbit that tends to get away. Like that. He can't get up either on entry. Clear by one and a half. Ranger to the inside of his teammate DJ Kennington, and he will take over that spot in between three and four. And that was a bit of a gift. I think DJ realized he had enough of a run. There's no point in fighting his teammate right now. Just get in behind him and run some laps. A couple of Chevrolets battling here, though, for third spot. Jason Hathaway trying to hold off the GM Pie number 22 of uh, Mark Antoine Cameron. Man, oh man, Hathaway. I thought earlier his car was real tight, and it could be a push loose, but he is really getting up the racetrack, and then right when he's getting straight on the straightaway, the backhand kicks around on him. Set down to the infield. Todd standing by with the driver is out. Todd? 
Yeah, guys, you can see the damage on the 64. Mark, we're glad you're out of that car safe. Take us through that spin, that that collision coming out of four. I, I don't know. Just uh, came up out of the corner, and I, I guess the old four didn't see us. He drove me right in the door and right through the wall. So, and then left his foot to the floor all the way down the straightaway. I just feel bad for Leland, NTN, everybody. It's been such a horrible year. I just can't get the monkey off our back, but I don't think this car will be coming back, so I'll come back with something, but I don't know if it'll be that car. I just, like I said, what are you gonna do? Thanks, Mark. And a battle for the lead now as LeBay to the inside of the 74 off Kevin Lacroix. Some smoke as they erupt through one and two. That was risky contact. Right front on left rear tire. That could cut both of these drivers' tires who really lead to some headaches early in the going. But Alex LeBay clears Lacroix. Lacroix does a great job to get down into the second spot. And we should mention that Kevin Lacroix realistically lives in the shadow of this track. You can almost throw a stone from this racetrack and hit his race shot. Some great onboard shots. You're not on the throttle very long here at St. Dash. You are on the bumps for a very long time. 250 laps. <laughs> and I'm sure the drivers will tell you exactly where each one of those bumps are. As now Ranger has managed to catch the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron. And you see the back end of those cars hot, especially right there in the inside of turn number two. It's battle for fourth. You need to have a great rhythm and really know when to be on the throttle and off the throttle to navigate those bumps without giving up a lot of speed. Wow, a little bit of bump there. Mark Antoine Cameron was all sorts of sideways. Yeah, don't blame that one on the track. <laughs> You can hear the bumps in the RPM of the engines. Now, I was talking to Kevin Lacroix after practice, and he said, in practice, you can pick and choose your way around the track. You can take a wide line and open up the inside. In the race, you have to go through those bumps to get the fast lane, because if you open up that inside, somebody will plug that hole. DJ Kennington showed us right there on his entry into turn one. Let's see if he takes that high groove entry again from overhead. It allows Donald Teach in that white car to stick his nose to the inside. We'll see if Teach is able to make the pass. The Canadian Association of Stock Car Auto Racing was a nation-sanctioning body back in the 90s and 2000s, and Autodrome St. Estash was a staple on the schedule. But it was in 2000 when Peter Gibbons took a bashed and beaten. Look at this. That happened while he was in the lead. And he took that Chevy from laps down to win one of the most talked about races of all time. Gibbons would go on to win the championship that year. Recently, he was inducted into the Canadian Motorsport Hall of Fame. That was the Don Thompson, Dave Whitlock, Peter Gibbons era, which was a fun time in Canadian motorsports. And if I'm not mistaken, we saw Sean Gibbs waving the green flag in that clip, but I think it might have been current race director Rob Sharp as the assistant flagman in the background that day. It sure did look like him, that's for sure. As the 24 back on track, Donald Teach completes the pass in the 17 of DJ Kennington for sixth spot. Dave, it's been quite an emotional weekend here at St. Estash. Earlier, we had a chance to talk with Alan LeBrosse. Well, here at the Autodrome, we bought this place in 2007 with my two sons. We've operated it for 12 years. It's been a roller coaster, but, uh, you know, roller coaster brings uh, ups and downs and lots of emotions and, you know, like makes your heart beat fast and so on and so forth. And uh, that's what this place has has done for us. And I think it has done for, for everybody that has participated. Uh, my career has been spanned over... Uh, 41 years now, so I started racing motorcycles at 17 and raced professionally and then automobiles and so on and so forth. And, you know, I wish all the teams, I wish all the spectators, I wish all the sponsors, I, I hope that they uh, continue to enjoy the sports of motorsports and uh, you'll see me once in a while in a very, very, very different role. Alan and his family need to be credited, Dave, for keeping racing alive and well in this marketplace. There were some very lean years. The LeBras family stuck it out, and they made it work. And this is one of two NASCAR home tracks in the province of Quebec. And son Jason will go on to build an oval program with the folks at ICAR, which is just down the road at the old Mirabelle Airport.
I'll be curious to see if they can build the same atmosphere, and I believe they can, but let's see if they can move it down the road successfully. I'm looking forward to it. If they keep it flat, guaranteed it's going to be a lot of the same characteristic as Autodrome St. Anastasia. Can they match the bumps? <laughs> guaranteed, no way. <laughs> that comes with character. That's what that is. So Andrew Ranger in that Mopar 27, he has driven his way into the top five. He's still five spots away from earning a bonus point for leading a lap, Dave. 76 laps in the books of a scheduled 250 here in the Lucas Oil 250. Donald Teach has shown signs of life in the 24. Starting back in 11th, he's currently moved up into sixth spot. He really desperately wants a win, and wouldn't it be great if it came here in front of his hometown provincial fans? And we got a spin, the, the 02 goes around. Kerry Mix was involved with David Michaud. He gets the car running again and takes off, but he has lost a lap. Let's have a look here. Nisho in the white car, and yeah, there was contact there on the entry to turn number one. And they were going to the outside of the lap car, Brandon White. A chassis adjustment going on. I believe they took spring rubbers out of the left rear of the 0-2. And LP Dumoulin is back in. He's been struggling today, Todd. Yeah, they definitely want to make a handling adjustment to that 47. The crew also cutting away a little bit of body work that's been rubbing on that left rear tire. Another stop from 18 as well. Another handling adjustment to try to help Scott Steck. Driver of the 36, Alex LeBay is your leader. He's won here in the past. Can he do it again here today? Welcome back to race number 11 at Autodrome St. Estache, the Lucas Oil 250. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me is Adam Ross and Todd Lewis. He is pit side as we go back to green. The 36 of Alex LeBay will lead him through one and two. Wild restarts with LeBay and Lacroix side by side pushing the limits. Jason Hathaway trying to sneak through and he will for second. And if you notice, Dave, there's a new sponsor on the 36 this week, Globocam. Martin at Festi Drag has been busy keeping the 36 team funded this year. Absolutely. It's great news to see new sponsors on board these race cars. And should mention, too, that Pete Shepard will be back in a seat in the NASCAR Pinty Series at our next race in New Hampshire. Running a team car to Alex LeBay in that 36 out of the Dave Jacobs stable. We should mention, too, we have heard from Mark Dilley. He'll be back in New Hampshire as well, as he said. Maybe not in that car, but they'll pick another car from the stable and make the trip. the best racer in the NASCAR Pinty Series era ever at St. Estache, Scott Steckley. Every time we go to his onboard, nice I just listen. Nice and smooth. We're in T5 right now. We get another restart. We'll be in a better position. But so let's just cool it here for a wee bit. Get some laps under our belt. We're going to hear this all day long, and this was perfect timing. We're going to open the holes up for us. That's what he'll do for us. Talk about Scott Steckley's success. A lot of that came with his cousin, Randy Steckley, who we just heard from on the radio telling his driver, Mark Antoine Cameron, look, fifth place is a good spot to be. You're third on the inside. Just ride for now. You know what's funny about Scott Steckley? This is the first race in his entire career. He is driving a car not numbered 22. He's having a fine run. He's out there behind Simone Dion Vienne right now and Matthew Kingsbury in the 75 just turning laps. A couple of drivers not just turning laps. They're in a battle. Jason Hathaway in the three. Kevin Lacroix in the 74. And if you remember, we are two races away from a pretty bitter Twitter feud between Hathaway and Lacroix. Yeah, a lot happened after Riverside on the social media after both did a little bit of a bump and run. Lacroix got into Hathaway, then Hathaway a bump and run for the win at Riverside Speedway. But they respect each other, and that is very important. It seems as though they've settled their differences. There's nothing petty there. Kevin Lacroix says, it's just racing. And Jason Hathaway, he says, this is NASCAR, baby. And that's the fun thing about Kevin Lacroix. He wears his emotion on his sleeves as Jason Hathaway way up the racetrack in that three car. Yeah, and that opens the door for the bumper to bumper total number 74 of Kevin Lacroix as he moves into second. And keep in mind, we are close to the midway break of this race. We're within 25 laps. So what Jason Hathaway just did is put 
potentially get himself the inside of the second row instead of the outside of the first row as his starting spot. And that is super important. We talked about it earlier. You don't want to be hung up on the outside. You'll fight for that inside lane as we look at a battle for eighth spot between Simone Zion Vienne and Kingsbury in the 75. Interesting to see that paint scheme with the yellow rookie stripe on the back bumper. It's been a while. You're not kidding. And I'm having a good time watching Kingsbury race. These cars are a lot heavier than the ACT late models he's used to racing, and the brakes aren't quite as powerful on these cars. So I've, I've been really impressed as this run goes on in the tires that he's managing to keep the car under control down in the racing groove. This is where the signs of a rookie driver often start to show. He's given that Duro King Dodge a very good run here today as we ride on board with Andrew Ranger in the Mopar, Mopar Pennzoil Dodge. Seem trying to pinch down on the inside of turn two and hits those bumps and can't quite get the run off. He does it all the time. Look at him. He's almost going to drive down into the pit road exit, down into one and two. Right here he goes into the corner. And we don't see it on the camera, but cuts right across the exit of pit road. It's an odd line, but he runs it with great success. Stop seem to help the 47. WeatherTech.ca Dodge of LP Dubley. Some life showing in that Dodge as he sneaks past the 75 of Kingsbury. If he wants to keep his name in the hat as a championship contender this season, he's got to keep on making passes and get up there in the top three. Remember, his quest at the beginning of 2019 was to become the first ever driver to win back-to-back -back championships. Hard to believe it hasn't happened before. It's amazing to me that it happened, hasn't happened. As we say, a pass for the fourth spot, DJ Kennington in the fourth. Andrew Ranger will say thank you very much. That puts me into fifth. I like it here. These two Dodges are really coming alive out of the DJK stable. Kennington and his teammate Andrew Ranger, they've been nose to tail. Haven't been far from each other really all race long. And Andrew Ranger was the faster car earlier on. He passed Kennington, if you remember. Kennington led him by, but he got around. Now that Kennington's out in front, so they seem to have slightly different peak times in their setup. Should mention, too, you haven't seen the 36 of Alex LeBay. He is still your race leader. He's opened up a significant gap, almost four seconds now, over the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. So you mentioned the rabbit that was getting out in front. That rabbit is now Alex LeBay. We are halfway through this race, and NASA car is telling us they are going to throw the midway break caution at the completion of this lap. So who's going to sandbag to try to get that inside line starting spot? Doesn't look like anybody is doing it deliberately as the caution flag waves. Dan Hawkins showing caution for the midway break, a competition caution here in the Lucas Oil 250. They will line up the cars behind the pace truck. They will let the free pass go, and then pit work will begin. Adam, we'll take a quick look at your VP Racing Fuels midway update. We're on lap 127. A great crowd here at Autodrome St. Estache. We've had two leaders, one lead change so far today. Two cautions for 16 laps so far, and there are 11 cars on the lead lap. So the field made their way onto pit lane, and here we go. Land rush of crews working towards the cars, and Todd is amongst them. Todd? Service begins for the number 36. They want a second half of the race, just like the first half. No changes, no adjustments. Fuel going in, they will switch four general tires afterwards. The 74 of Kevin Lacroix also getting routine service. Fell from the pole position to second. We'll see if there's any changes. Doesn't look like there will be on the 74. The three car reported to be just a little bit tight. It got worse over the stretch of that run. They're going to make some adjustments. They'll think they'll be better in the second half. And if you watch, Don Brock just picked up a spring rubber from the wheel of Jason Hathaway's car to insert it in the right rear, a chassis adjustment to the three machine. You're watching NASCAR Pinty Series racing from Autodrome St. Estache. Alex LeBay leads the Lucas Oil 250 as we prepare to go back to green. Dave, so 25 laps of planning went into the inside starting row. Let's see if it plays out that way. Inside, still down there, inside. Field flying through, turns three and four. They get all strung out, mostly single file. There you see 
Simon Dion Vienne and Kingsbury side by side. Now Dion Vienne will find that hole to the inside. Brandon White, after all the damage from that early race crash, he's keeping pace with the pack. The car looks like a handful, but he's out there turning laps as we ride on board with Alex LeBay. Listen to the bumps. strong and look at that he's able to open up a couple car length gap right away 
Yeah, Hathaway just looks so good right now in the center of the turn. As we say that, he kind of missed his mark a little bit there, and the car shot up the racetrack. Now, you know what's interesting? That's where I saw the drivers driving when they were in practice, so they were able to avoid the bumps. That might have been by design rather than a miscue on Jason Hathaway's behalf. There he goes a little bit up on the outside again. If he doesn't have the pressure from Alex LeVay, why not miss those bumps and avoid the possibility of a spin? I have seen a lot of drivers, particularly in the entry to turn one, going a little bit higher than we're traditionally used to seeing them enter the turn. Quick ride on board, Kevin Lacroix, who is in third, hoping these two in front of him start to mix it up just a little bit. Speaking of mix it up, there's Kerry Mix behind the 18 of Scott Steckley. That's a battle for position. Mixie is back on the lead lap. They're racing for the eighth spot. Couple veterans in the NASCAR Pinty Series. Again, four-time champion is Scott Steckley. Kerry Mix has a number of race wins behind the wheel of the 0-2. He's here for fun. We got a car around. It's the 37 of Simone Ziovian. The yellow flag comes out. Pit Road closes. You can see Amy Wong with the red flag in the air for Pit Road. Let's have a look and see how this developed. And it looks like David Michaud there in the 56. Might have got in the back of the 37. Steckley taking the opportunity for more chassis adjustments, though, in the Rona pits, and here's the 47, Todd. Huh? They have been chasing this car all day long. Started off loose, seemed to be going in the right direction. LP Dumoulin saying now the car is too tight. It's been very finicky for the 47 today. Remember, he needs a big run here today. Comes into this one third in points. He'll have some work to do. We'll be back. This is the 11th time the NASCAR Pinty Series has made a visit to Autodrome St. Estache. It'll be the final time this track is closing at the end of this season. So these drivers looking to put on a show here for the final laps of the Lucas Oil 250. Great restart by Jason Hathaway and a good launch as well by Kevin Lacroix. He is solidly to the inside of Alex LeBay. Yeah, you see LeBay up in that outside groove trying to make it work again. That second groove really hasn't come in here at this track as we've seen it like some other facilities where yeah, drivers can race side it. by side. Outside now. You are absolutely right. It's just an old school track. It's a one groove down along the bottom. Get your nose dirty and go get it. So that's Joe Chisholm talking to his driver, Andrew Ranger. Ranger has quietly snuck his way up inside the top five again. Started well back in the field. We set the qualifying order on practice times after qualifying was rained out, but 27 has been strong here in the past. He has top tens in all nine starts. He won here at Autodrome St. Estage back in 2015. There's a driver who can win at every racetrack we visit, and there's not that many racers who can say that, Dave. Road course, ovals, Andrew Ranger has won on them all. Here comes Teach to the inside. Of the 17 of DJ Kennington. So the important thing there, Stephen Simmons saying you've got three car lengths back to the 0-2. As Matthew Kingsbury with a big move up the inside of Kerry Mix. Down on the apron, but he'll pick up the spot at 7th for the 75 of Kingsbury. And he did it without rubbing the 0-2 the of Kerry Mix. It was a great move, and we were saying the reason that was good information for Stephen Simmons, DJ Kennington didn't have to think, just drop back, get in line, and go racing. In 2003, the night before the race at Autodrome St. Estache, Don Thompson Jr. had his championship winning race car stolen out of a parking lot in Laval. The cast car community came together and Don Thompson Jr. and John Fitzpatrick were able to race that day. Well, that night, DJ Kennington won running for Ed Hackinson today. An Ed Hackinson car driven by Jason Hathaway leads in the closing stages of the Lucas Oil 250. One big traveling family, Dave. We cross the country, we head to the west, we head to the east, back and forth repeatedly between Ontario and Quebec. 
They fight hard on the racetrack, but they're the first ones to support each other when the time comes. They'll beat the bumpers off each other's cars, but those drivers will be there at each other's pit saying, do you need to borrow a bumper, by the way? As the 47 moves up into seventh position, so pretty good rebound for the WeatherTech Dodge crew. They've worked hard for this today, repeated trips to pit lane. I think just about every yellow flag they've been in the pits to make adjustments, but he's showing speed at the right point of the race. Scott Steckley sitting in 11th position in the 18. He's the meat in that sandwich between Kingsbury in the Duro King of Bois Claire in Suns number 75. Big problems for the 04 of white tire down the front is all damaged he has made big contact with something we're on board with carry mix a bit of a bump going into the turn so that's what started it and that's what finished it into the wall on the outside of the back straightaway i think brandon white might have already been upset by the first contact Maybe he was trying to make some contact of his own and just missed a little bit there, Dave. He's having trouble with the mixed racing team as a battle for third now. Changes hands, the 27 of Andrew Ranger around the 36 of Alex LeBay. Out in front, it is still Jason Hathaway by a wide margin. Your race leader over Kevin Lacroix, Andrew Ranger up in that third spot, and we are getting down to the final stages, and Brandon White is not very happy on pit road. No, you can see that, but look at the gap now part. for Jason Hathaway. Back to the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Now, if you look at the season stories, we've had the 47 win in his hometown at the Grand Prix de 20 Vier. We had Raphael Lassard winning in his first start at Autodrome shared Chaudière, a place where he cut his racing teeth. Now with six laps to go, can Kevin Lacroix in his own backyard catch the three of Jason Hathaway? I can tell you one thing, Dave. If he catches the three of Hathaway, he will make his move. Like, wait, he doesn't need much of a hole. He will build his own hole to try to pass for the lead. And that will be typical St. Estash racing if we see it. But right now, Hathaway doing everything he needs to do, hitting his marks off of turn number four. Four to go this time past the stripe here on the Lucas Oil 250. Each lap, they're within about a tenth of a second a lap of each other. One lap, Lacroix will close in half a tenth. The next lap, Hathaway will get it right back. So it's really a two-horse race at the front of the field. Hathaway and Lacroix, you look back, there's a lap car in between second and third as Andrew Ranger is quite a distance back from this lead group. Oh, Lacroix drove it in hard there, slid up the track just a little bit. That allows Hathaway to open up another couple of car lanes. Laquan did everything he needed to do as far as points go for today. He led a lap. He stayed in front of the 27 all day long, so he may be confident and comfortable sitting where he is right now. The white flag is up. One more lap around St. Estash for the NASCAR Pinty Series. The Lucas Oil 250. Man, oh man, Jason Hathaway has opened that advantage. Kevin Laquan. The class of the field all day. For the second time this season, Jason Hathaway is climbing out on top of that number three and smiling at victory lane. A return to the series full time. It has been quite a weekend for Jason Hathaway and the team as he does the leap to celebrate with his team. You've had quite a weekend. Brand new baby Max had arrived on Friday and you came here to win on Sunday. I don't know what to say. Grace, I'm crying again. I think I'm too old for this, I think. <clears throat> I don't know. I said I was going to uh, bring a trophy home for a little guy, so we did it. Jason Hathaway, what a win. Your your team set you up. You were a little little tug at the first part of the race. They did a little adjustment, and boy, you rode it in the second half. 
Yeah, we were <clears throat> we were pretty good in the first half, but I just kind of cruised. I think the 74 was trying to let me get by him there, and uh, he wanted to start third instead of second. I wouldn't give it to him, so um, that kind of set us up for a good good second second half there, and made a couple good adjustments, and uh, we were gone. We were gone. Nobody's gonna catch us. <sighs> second time this season, Jason Hathaway is victorious. See Gary Mead in the background, a big hug from him. He's been with the team a long time and one of the reasons they run so well. Let's take a look at the auto value top 10. A good run for Donald T. Top five. Back deeper in the top 10, Kerry Mix with eighth. Matthew Kingsbury finishing 10th in the 75. Todd standing by with your second place finisher, Todd. Kevin, thought you might have something for a victory, but Jason was a little strong, but still another great finish for you. Well, the goal for us is finish ahead of 27 for sure. Uh, we led the lap also, so one extra point for that. But uh, I was looking forward to the, uh, the end of the race to give uh, Jason uh, his shot of Riverside, but I guess he was too fast. We uh, So it will be another time. But uh, <laughs> So, you know, not the exciting finish that we, uh, we were hoping, but uh, still second place for us. It's uh, very good, very happy about it. Kevin Lacroix doing what he needs to do to win a championship. Much like elephants, racers never forget. <laughs> Kevin has really embraced his role as a NASCAR race car driver, and he leads the point standings by two points with two races to go over Andrew Ranger. That's really a two-horse race now. LP Dumoulin, 28 points back. It's really out of his grasp to catch those two leaders. But there's Hathaway taking the top step of the podium here at Autodrome St. Estache. And in this season-long battle of cat and mouse, how about Andrew Ranger sneaking in there for a third-place finish? Could have been a lot worse. The Lucas Oil 250 has been brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. By VP Racing Fuels. And by Honey Goo from Clean Flow, one honey of a lube. It's sad to say goodbye to Autodrome St. Estache, but from here, we go back for our second race in the United States in the history of the series. The Visit New Hampshire 100 at New Hampshire Motor Speedway from all of us on TSN. We'll see you stateside. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.